at Dajjal, that I know where he is, where he's going to exit. My sending and the coming of the hour is like these two fingers, 10 major signs of the day of judgment. The prelude to that is Al-Mahdi. So those 10 signs that we find are mentioned is the Antichrist, the descending of the coming down of Isa alayhi salam, Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Then we find three signs of sinking of the earth that will take place in the east and the west and inside the Arabian Peninsula. Al-Dukhan, the smoke that will come, as we mentioned inside the Surah Al-Dukhan, the rising of the sun from the west, Ad-Daba, the beast that will come out and speak to people, is mentioned at Surah al -Namal and the fire that will gather the people. And the Prophet he mentioned that there's going to be, towards the end of time, approximately 30 Dajjalun, 30 false liars, before the coming of the Day of Judgment. And some people believe the system that we live around at the moment, or the New World Order, that's what a Dajjal is. Oh, Dajjal in the beginning times of modern technology, people said the TV is Dajjal, then the video was Dajjal, then the satellite system is a Dajjal. These are all things which have been documented that people thought. Also, we find some people believe currency. You look at a one dollar bill, you find the one eye on top of the pyramid or whatever. So in today's language, we find the matrix, those who haven't broken free from the matrix and to be with top G, whatever it may be at the moment. Some people think that we have to break the matrix. All these are just thoughts and ideas that people believe in. But in the hadith, it mentioned that Dajjal, he is a man, a human being. When the ulama say Ad-Dajjal with the Lam Ta'rif, with a definite article, then it means the one Dajjal that will come at the end. It's totally clear and recognizable who Ad-Dajjal is. So you don't need a, a great deep study to understand who Ad-Dajjal is. A basic Muslim will be able to recognize who Ad-Dajjal is and be able to recognize that this individual who's trying to claim to be an ilah, to be a god, to be a deity, cannot be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because all the defects all shows that this individual has no right to claim any form of being a deity in any any right or any manner. We find the Prophet as mentioned, I'm going to warn you about this individual and there has not been any Prophet that came before except he warned his people about this individual. But I'm going to give you some information that no other Prophet ever spoke about this information about a Dajjal. Indeed, he is blind, defect or is one-eyed and your Lord is not one-eyed. There's been no greater creation or trial or tribulation since the beginning of Adam until the end of time will be a Dajjal. His eye, will, his right eye will be protruding like a grape, will be like popping out, will be his right eye and his left eye will have a, a skin covering over it. The other ulama mentioned that in the Muslim Imam Ahmad that he has a wide forehead, a broad upper chest, a hunchbacked individual, defective legs as well and be written on the front of his forehead will be the word kafir or in other narration mentioned the harf kaf fa ra will be imprinted on his forehead. Every Muslim is going to be able to read this. Likewise, he's going to have twisted, cropped hair. He's going to be barren. He's not going to have any children. Also, is Dajjal living at this moment in time? And we're going to speak about the hadith of Tamim al-Dari, that he is actually living at this time. Tamim al-Dari was a Christian individual who entered Islam in the ninth year of the Islamic calendar inside Medina. Fatima bin Qaisi mentions that the communal prayer was announced so he came out and we offered the prayer behind the Prophet and he said to everybody remain behind indeed I want to tell you uh, something. So he mentioned that Tamim Adari said that we were on an expedition on a boat and we were tossed around by the, by the, by the storm and the wind in the ocean for some 30 days till eventually we, we saw an island at a distance and so we took a small boat and some of us, we embarked that small boat, like a canoe or a small raft, and we took that boat and we came to the island. When we landed upon the island, we saw like a beast, Jasasa, this beast, we don't know his front from his back, so this talking beast, and he's there in front of us, and obviously we were frightened at seeing this, this, this individual on this island, and he said that indeed there's someone who's waiting, we thought it was a devil, we got scared. He said there's indeed there's somebody who's waiting who wants to meet you inside this monastery, inside this cave. So we entered inside this area and there was a well-built individual who was there. And we find that his neck was tied and there were shackles placed around his neck and gripping his legs and his ankles. So this individual then asked him certain questions. He asked him about the date palm trees of Baysan, the lake of Tabariya. He asked him about the spring of Zuhr. So he asked him all these questions about all these different locations. Then he asked them, has the unlettered prophet, has he come out? And they said, yes, he has exited. And he asked, is there victory for him or victory for him? The days for them, days for him. And he said that shortly, it will be given permission for me to be released, to leave. Indeed, inni anal masih. Indeed, I am 
يعني الدجال then we come to uh, ابن سياد ابن سياد was this young individual born يعني inside Medina at the time of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام certain things were given to this individual he was basically a soothsayer or type of magician that he was that he used to see certain things or the jinn used to come to him so some of the companions began to believe that he is a dajjal so the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam yani he approached him and asked him that what do you what do you see he see he says that i see a throne sometimes the truth is told to me sometimes a lie is told to me so all this is showing that there's some form of of usage of jinn entering upon him or coming to him or whispering him is being said to him and one occasion the prophet alayhi salam is approaching him and he's got his back turned to the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam his mother calls out that muhammad is coming muhammad is coming he quickly turns around so the prophet alayhi salam says to him that you know what am i concealing so certain w- verses the prophet alayhi salam has got him in his mind verse from surah ad-dukhan the 44th chapter of the quran surah ad-dukhan ad-dukhan is one of the major one of the 10 signs of their judgment that the smoke will come and he should test this individual how much of the contact of the jinn does he have he said ad-dukh ad-dukh So he's able to pick up some of the information. So this individual was a dupe star that he's able to gain this knowledge but he wasn't able to understand. The prophet is proving that you can't see the unseen. You can't see what's been given to me. So he said to him, "Ikhsa ya adu Allah." And basically he said, "Just get lost." And the prophet was very really was a harsh individual. You're an enemy of Allah. Abu Sa'id Khudri met him at a later stage and he was apprehensive to sit with him. He offered him some milk something to drink to eat and Abu Sa'id al-Khudri wanted to get away from him didn't want to drink with him because why psychologically in the back of their mind Ibn Sayyad has been labeled as being a Dajjal Ibn Sayyad himself says to Abu Sa'id al-Khudri that if I'm Dajjal then how comes I've got children how comes I'm being able to perform Hajj and Abu Sa'id al-Khudri says that I felt some pity towards this individual but then he made this statement that I know where he is where he's going to exit So now I once again I thought that this individual he's one form of dajjal because he must have some relationship with the jinn to be saying making the statement about yani ad dajjal Al Mahdi is classified as a bridging gap between the completion of the final minor signs of the day of judgment and entering into the major sign of the day of judgment Imam Mahdi will come when the world is full of corruption and turmoil and he will begin to place justice equity fairness upon the earth of the previous when the earth was full of corruption and turmoil Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will rectify him in one night that in the narration mentions that they will be sons of the khalifa that will begin to fight for the treasures which exist underneath the kaaba at that time al mahdi will begin to appear the place the bay'ah will be given to al mahdi between the rukun al hajr al aswad wal maqam the maqam of ibrahim alayhi salam Like when you find the sinking of the earth when Imam Mahdi comes, when people come to attack him, the earth will sink and swallow up those people. So Mahdi will be known as the name of Muhammad ibn Abdullah. That will be his name from birth. As for Al Mahdi, it's a title that's given to the chosen one or the selected one. He's going to be from the lineage of Fatima. Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu from the lineage of Al Hasan. He will have a wide forehead and he will have a, an aquiline, a sharp nose. He will be. in conduct like the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but he will not be like him in total appearance they were man who lived for some 7 or 8 years in it upon this earth the jal will come out bain al malhama wa fath al madina sittu sanin we find the great war and then the the conquering of constantinople which is modern day istanbul that we find at the moment will be 6 years and the 7th year will be coming the exiting of the jal in the hadith and sunan of abi dawood other hadith it mentions The jail will come out when knowledge is limited, ignorance is spread, is prevalent in society, excessive drinking that we find, and a whole list of different things are mentioned competing in lofty buildings, all types of atrocities and sins that exist upon the face of the earth. Or oh, another hadith that mentions there's going to be something that's going to anger at the jail and the ad is going to exit and he's going to uh, come out and likewise we mention when people or the imams begin to not mention him inside the khutbah in the sermons will bring about the exiting of ad dajjal where will ad dajjal come from in a hadith inside muslim ahmad we find al makan huwa khurasan so al khurasan is like the area upper part of, of afghanistan iran all that area ad dajjal will come and he remain for 40 hadith inside sahih muslim i don't know whether he will remain for 40 years or 40 days or 40 months another hadith it mentions one day of dajjal will be like one year another day will be like one month another day will be like uh, yawm al-jum'a and the rest of the days will be just like the normal days that we have who are those individuals who are going to follow ad-dajjal the people of asfahan as we mentioned the land of iran at the moment that we find 
is where the, those people will come from that area and they have certain shawls and certain dress sense that they wear. So from that area, these individuals are going to follow any Ad-Dajjal. Amongst them will be An-Nisa and people of Ajam, and Turk, and Arab. Ad-Dajjal will be given shayateen, will be given any devils at his service. As for Fitna Ad-Dajjal, will blow the mind away. There's going to be no greater fitness since the creation of Adam except for the coming of Ad-Dajjal. It will come to a person and his brother has died, his father has died. فيقول, and the Dajjal will say to him, if I bring your brother back to life, I bring your father back to life. Will you believe that I'm your Lord? فيقول, بلا, he said, oh, of course I will believe. So Shayateen will come and begin to resemble to be like his, his brother and his father and this individual believe. We find he will order the sky to rain and rain will come down. He will order the earth to grow and bring forth his veg vegetation. He will walk through the desert and will ask the desert to bring out its treasures and its treasures will be brought out. Also, you're going to find a great mountain of bread will be given to this individual. Two rivers will be given to him. Two rivers which are actually flowing. The river of fire is going to be the river of paradise. And the river of paradise given to him of, of pure water is going to look like Pure water is going to look like is going to be actually, if you go inside that water, will be entering into, into the hellfire. That's the Prophet Islam said. The person should close their eyes. Enter into the fire because when you enter into the fire, you're going to actually enter into paradise. He's also going to be able to split a young person in half or split a person in half in two halves and walk straight through the middle of this individual and put this individual back together again. And he's going to come to one individual who's going to be the greatest shaheed on that day and he's going to uh, do this to this individual, split him in half, put him back together again. But this individual who's going to have that iman, that yaqeen, that certain said that I definitely know that you are a Dajjal. And the blessing of this individual Dajjal is not going to be able to kill this individual and he's going to have a great big donkey in excessive whiteness that his donkey will be given. He's moving or traversing upon the earth it will be like the rain that comes and the wind that pushes the rain or the drops of rain that means it will be traveling across the earth at great speed. So where can a person flee when a Dajjal comes? We find there are certain places that a Dajjal cannot enter. He will traverse across all across this earth in 40 days. Except for four locations, he's not going to be able to enter. He's not going to be able to enter into Mecca, into Medina, and Masjid Al-Aqsa that we find, and Masjid Yani Al-Tur. When he tries to enter to Mecca and Medina, there will be angels there who will be guarding Mecca and Medina, and he will not be able to enter. Rather, when he goes to the outskirts of Medina, he will say, and he's highlighting this prophecy of the Prophet ﷺ, he will see that I want to overcome this bait, a qasr al abyad this white castle. What is he referring to this white castle? If you look at Masjid Nabawi today, if you look at it from, from, a, from the Google Maps, it's a white building. In some narrations that mention the Prophet ﷺ, he saw him making tawaf around the Kaaba. So two interpretations are given. The first thing, the Prophet ﷺ has shown him in a dream. The other interpretation by ulama of Hadith that this is before he is, comes out of being known as a Dajjal, that he's, he was able to enter into the area of Mecca and Medina is something which is mentioned. Isa alayhi salam, he will descend upon the white minaret, minaret on the eastern side of Damascus and he'll be wearing a certain cloak which will be tainted or dyed with a form of saffron and we place his hands on the wings of two angels that will bring him down. So it'll be a physical descending. There will be shower trinkets of, of, of wet water that will be coming down from his forehead. He lowers his head, beads of perspiration will, will, will fall for him. If he raises it, then you find beads or forms of pearls will drop from his head. They'll come down whilst the prayer or the call of prayer has been established. And the Imam is from any amongst you. The Imam amongst you is referring to Imam Al-Mahdi. It's referring to him that he's the one who's going to lead the Muslims in, in prayer. He said, you are leaders one ab above others amongst yourself. And this is an honor that this is your Imam. Let him lead the prayer. So Isa alayhi salam will only follow Imam Mahdi inside yani, the prayer. And amongst the things that Isa alayhi salam will do, he's going to come back and he's going to do what? He's going to kill the Antichrist. He's going to kill him at the gate of Lud. Whereby when the Dajjal sees Isa alayhi salam, he's going to, just like salt dissolves inside water, he's going to dissolve away. He's going to be scared of Isa alayhi salam. So Isa alayhi salam is going to come up to him. For Yamshi for Yaqtulu is going to kill him. That's only for Isa alayhi salam. There'll come a time that Isa alayhi salam, that he will come down amongst you. A, a just and, and a fair ruler. فَيَقْسِرَ الصَّلِيبِ And he will break the cross. وَيَقْتُلُ الْخَنْزِيرِ He will kill the swine. 
وَيَدْعُ الْجِزْيَةَ and you will lift up the jizya will no longer be accepted وَيَفِيدُ المال and wealth will become excessive حتى لا يقبل أحد and no one will be able to accept that wealth عيسى عليه السلام will go to Mount Tur will take his army there and he'll wait there وَيَبْعَثَ اللَّهُ يَعْجُوجُ مَعْجُوجُ وَهُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ حَدَبٍ يَنْسِلُونَ and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send out يَعْجُوجُ مَعْجُوجُ so meaning that this great wall will just fall down totally and then when the doors are open you find يَعْجُوجُ مَعْجُوجُ will be coming swarming down from every single high location coming down upon the people and you find that they will drink the water of the lake at Tabariya when يَعْجُوجُ مَعْجُوجُ think that they've killed everything destroyed everything on the earth and they shoot their arrows into the sky and it comes back tainted with blood. They said we've killed everything on the earth, plundered everything on the earth, killed everything in the heavens. We, we're the basically dominant controlling the whole of the earth. And the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would destroy these individuals, you find a dude, a worm, that goes into the noses of camels and beasts, go into their necks, etc., and destroy them. And they will all die together, their bodies in a foul smell and stench will be there. And then you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send birds and pick them up and take them away. That Allah will send down a rain upon the face of this earth, go upon every home, water will enter into every single region, every single place, and the earth will be washed like a mirror, will be glass, everything will be shiny, the earth will be washed clean and it was said to the earth bring out your, your fruits and return back the blessings that belong there and you find that a group of people will be able to eat from one single pomegranate be able to come underneath the shade of its of its leaves and the milk that a camel gives will be enough for a tribe to drink and there will be peace upon the earth the lions will be able to mix with the camels the wolf with the sheep and children will be able to play with with snakes and they won't harm them meaning that the poison will be taken away the she camel or a young camel will just be left there no one will pay any attention to it Ulama said it means that there will be so much wealth that you find hatred, rancor, ill feeling, jealousy will all be taken away. So meaning that all forms of diseases that we find or harmful, poisonous elements that exist on the earth, whether it be animals towards animals or the danger of animals or danger of human beings towards one another, all of it will be taken away. A time of peace and tranquility and there will be immense wealth and no one will accept that wealth on that moment in, in time. Isa alayhi salam is going to follow the law of the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu salam. He will judge with the Sharia that's been given to the Prophet alayhi salam. He will not come with a separate law or a new law. Likewise, you come and perform Hajj and Umrah, he'll get married and he have children like a normal individual. He will be upon this earth for seven years and then he will die and then it will be prayed upon him by the Muslims. They will bury him next to our Prophet Muhammad. Then Allah will send a wind, a cold breeze, a cold wind, mean Qibli Sham from the direction of Sham. And this wind will wipe away and take every single individual who has any element of Iman inside their heart. And a man will take a, a morsel of food and try to raise it and place it inside their mouth. They won't be able to place it and that their judgment will be established.